My name is Jochen Neerpasch. At the time, 1972, I was the head of the BMW Motorsport GmbH. When the production started, without uh, going to races, we couldn't sell the car. So we thought to have a known series, but we thought it's not enough to have a usual normal manufacturer series. And we had a very nice evening um, in, I, th I think it was 78, with Max Mosley. And then we came up with the idea, let's have the races uh, Saturday before the Formula One Grand Prix and let's have a participation with the Formula One drivers in the M1 cars. I initially became involved in Pro Car when BMW uh, approached uh, my company, which at that time was Project 4, and uh, asked if we were capable of building a quantity of uh, Pro Cars very quickly. It was uh, clear that they had uh, a lot of pressure because they were running against a deadline uh, to start the series. Come the end of 78, Ron said we've got a few cars to build for a new series supporting F1 in Europe. So I oh, was interesting new, new project to try, but then it was basically assembling kits that came from Munich for the BMW M1 Pro Car. The chassis would arrive, then you'd have your engine and gearbox. They were all, you know, built the racing engine. We didn't, you know, we just bolted the engines in because they were already prepared for motorsport in Munich. So we didn't design anything at all. It was all done in Munich by motorsport. And I think Ron got the contract to build them all up, assemble them. So basically it's like a, a kit car, but you get it all, put it all together, um, assemble it, fire the engines up, get everything working. We get them painted to the customer's colour scheme and then they'll be delivered back to the customer. They were brutal cars, they didn't handle very well. They, were, they had to hassle them through the corners and you had all these superstar names, you know, banging fenders like touring car drivers. So the crowd loved it. I think we all loved it. It's a shame that, you know, these are the things you couldn't have that nowadays because none of the teams would let their drivers do it. The M1 was a wonderful car to drive. It was not vicious, it was not loud, it was, I mean, you didn't put on the radio, obviously, but, you know, it was a bit noisy with the exhaust. They had to be noisy to be sexy, you know, if they're too quiet, they lose sex appeal. You want the noise, it's all the stimulus. It's the looks, the smell, the noise, and that attracts you to these particular machines. Inside, it was very civilized, the car was nice to drive. I mean, people enjoyed watching it, and they were sliding and drifting, they were beautiful cars, so that made, that made, the key impact to me. Then you see names like Mario Andretti, Carlos Reutemann, Didier Peroni, Jean-Pierre Charrier, Niki Lauda, Nelson Piquet, John Watson, Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Patrick Depayer, Jack Lafitte, Alan Jones, Clay Regazzoni. They all drove M1. I mean, this is fantastic, isn't it? This was the first year. The interest in broker in M1 racing left a little bit uh, was BMW because the decision then was to go into Formula One. This was a priority and therefore I think ProCard was forgotten a little bit. It was not a good decision because it was so popular and the M1 originally was thought to be the motorsport car for BMW for the future. But uh, as I said, Formula One got priority. This was a decision. But for me, uh, the M1 is somehow my child, it was, it was not a good decision. Uh, I mean, even nowadays, 50 years later, everybody speaks about the Proca series, so it was very successful.